Was that, uh, did that video go all the way to the end? Well, today, you know, this sermon we are going to record um, and probably broadcast next Sunday night. So that's why we moved all of this stuff out. So, but before we start recording it, I just wanted to mention to, to you that we are recording it. So please try not to walk in front of these cameras here. Uh, sometimes people need to get up and, uh, and go, but try to avoid those. In any case, uh, <clears throat> I just want to welcome all of you here this uh, morning. And I also want to welcome our TV audience that is going to watch this sermon on Sunday night. And as always, we like to offer a book. And this week we are offering Experiencing God's Love. And this is a wonderful book. Um, over the last year, we have offered a number of books. And we have given away probably hundreds of books so far. And this congregation here is the one that is sponsoring all of this. So I just want to thank you for that. And I also want to let uh, people know who are watching this program that you can call the number on the screen and you can also request, besides a book, you can also request a prayer. And myself and some of my assistants, all pastors, we are answering these uh, phone lines and if you have uh, a problem that you need somebody to pray with, then we are going to do that uh, with you. And uh, we have prayed with so many people over this last year, and it was a real blessing, I think, for everybody, for the people and for us, because it gives us an opportunity to minister. Also, if uh, you want to see these sermons, you can go to the YouTube, and the address is also on the screen, and uh, you can watch uh, all of these sermons that were on air during the last couple of years. And that also goes for you guys in here too. If you would like to see these sermons, they are on YouTube and uh, they are available to everybody free of charge. We are talking today about Thanksgiving. Obviously, we just had a big weekend here and um, it's a big holiday here in the United States. And what is it that, it that it is known for the most? When the Thanksgiving comes, what do people, um, what do people get excited about on that day? Anybody? Do they get the turkey? Okay, turkey is good. People do get excited about the turkey, but they also get excited about something else, something that comes right after the turkey day, right? Friday? Black Friday, I tell you, and it's just, uh, it's just interesting. This was the first time I've been living in this country since 75, and this was the first time that, that I decided to go shopping on Thursday night. And I said, Let's, I'm going to go to Walmart, I said. And uh, me and Milos and Jasmina, we went over to Walmart. And I tell you, 10 o'clock at night on Thursday night, there was not one single parking spot anywhere. And we walked in there, and we were in there for about 10 minutes. And we actually had to fight uh, to, to come out of that store. I mean, didn't buy a thing. The place was just so extremely packed. Everybody, it seems like everybody was out there wanting to buy something, wanting to get a deal. Is this what we are thankful for, for an opportunity to buy more stuff? It seems like we are living in such a materialistic society that that's all that we are interested in. And we forget that we should be thankful for things. When was the last time that you were really thankful and grateful to God for the things that happened to you in your life? When was that? Every day. Every single day. I remember, you know, uh, a few years ago, I was driving from um, Texas back to Denver. And I think I maybe mentioned this story to you a long time ago. And uh, it was nighttime. My car was driving fine. And all of a sudden, I hit something. And it was a deer. I hit the deer. And I messed up the, my front end. And I came out and I was just so angry and so upset that, you know, the fact that I had, that I had, that I was in an accident. And it just bugged me so much. And you know what? Luckily, my car was still driving. And I drove all the way from Amarillo to Denver 
my car was messed up, but I made it home. And then at one point during that ride, I reminded myself that I could have died. I could have died in that accident. I hit that deer, I killed it, my car was messed up, but I was still in one piece. And you know, sometimes we have circumstances in life that are not good circumstances. That's why in the Bible, in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ. And sometimes you don't have good circumstances in life, right? Sometimes you have downright bad circumstances in life. And when that happens, what do most people do? A lot of people complain, right? But I think as Christians, we should be looking for something to be thankful for in that particular circumstance. Because there is always something positive for which we can be thankful. There is always something positive for, in our lives. I heard a story, somebody said that uh, after a big snowstorm, a woman came out to clean her driveway and as she was waving hi to her neighbor, her neighbor said, hey, how come your husband is not uh, out here helping you out? And she says, well, somebody had to stay inside and, and, um, and take care of the kids. And we, we drew the straws. And uh, he says, well, I'm, I'm real sorry for the bad luck. And she says, no, no, I'm the one that won. <laughs> See, so sometimes those, those who are parents, they understand, right? They would, be, they would rather be out there shoveling snow than inside taking care of the kids. We can be thankful for something in our life all the time. Give God thanks in all of the circumstances. There was a psychiatrist one time who said, I used to think people complained because they had a lot of problems. But he says, then I realize that they have a lot of problems because they complain. Isn't that the truth? Sometimes we have a lot of problems because we complain about things in life. And, and when you run across somebody who is always complaining, you really don't want to deal with that person. And when we complain all the time, it only amplifies the situation, right? You start thinking about it more and more and you start becoming negative more and more and it, it affects you in a bad way to the point where you finally just don't know what to do about it. You know, because you're constantly complaining. Psalm 77 verse 3 says, I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Even the Bible says that when we complain too much, we become overwhelmed and we become depressed. And we have a hard time dealing with our situation. So stop complaining and look for something positive that's going on in your life. Philippians 2.13 says, do everything without complaining or arguing. So that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe. So do everything without complaining or arguing. A positive person is somebody who is a great witness in this world. If you say that you're a Christian, but at your workplace and in your neighborhood, you are the one that everybody knows is a negative person. You are not being a witness for Jesus Christ. A negative person cannot be a witness. Because everybody else looks at you and they say, Oh, I definitely don't want to be like that person. And I definitely don't want to go to the same church where they go. And I definitely want to believe what they believe. Because look at their life. They're always negative. They're always complaining. They're always putting everybody else down. You cannot be a witness if you're, if you're a negative and complaining person. And you can be a great witness if you're a positive and thankful person. Somebody who always finds something to be thankful about it and who expresses that to God and to other people. When people talk to you, what do they hear coming out of your mouth? Do they hear you thanking God for all the wonderful things he's done for you? Or do they hear you complaining about your circumstances? You know what? Everybody has circumstances. And somebody else's circumstances may be a hundred times worse than yours. That's why it says here, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks in all circumstances. Well, some of you may say, how do I give thanks in a circumstance that's bad? 
Well, no matter how bad it is, even in, even in this life, if we lose what's most dear to us, which is our own life, God promises to restore that one day. Amen. You know, the fact that you were born and have an opportunity to receive the eternal life is a tremendous thing to be thankful for. Amen. You may not have a bed of roses here on this, in this world. But God promises that if you are thankful, and if you are grateful, and if you are faithful to Him, He promises a tremendous reward. Amen. In this country, in the United States of America, and nowadays in a lot of countries in Europe and many rich countries, we just have it so good. We have all the things, you know, that, that, uh, that a person could, could want. In 1 Timothy 6, 17, the Bible says, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoy enjoyment. So if you are rich, if you are doing good, don't be arrogant. Because that comes from God. There are plenty of poor people out there. Let me ask you something, just a moment of self-assessment. And looking back into your history, where did you come from? I came from the old country. My father came from a place, and I told you many times, they didn't have running water, didn't have electricity. Where did you come from when you started out? Where were you born? How was your upbringing? We got people in this church who came from Mexico. I've been in Mexico. I've seen how people live over there. Homes with dirt floors and no glass in the windows. And you're sleeping in there and the birds come flying into your house and lizards and all kinds of things. Where did you come from? Who were you before who you are now? What, what was your upbringing when you were a kid? You know, when you, when you start looking back on where you come from, where your family came from, you realize that you should not be arrogant. Because everything that you have right now, comes from God. Amen. How much stuff we have in this country. I mean, all you have to do in Denver is go to the Mile High flea market and you can walk through acres and acres and acres of junk. And we are so rich in this world with junk and all kinds of things. I mean, nobody in this country has to starve. Nobody in this country has to have a place without the furniture. You can get all of that stuff on the cheap. We are rich. In this world, in the things of this world. So, should we keep asking for more and more and more? How much is enough? I have friends, pastors, you know, in um, Jim Brower, who used to be a conference president here. He is now working in Bangladesh. In Bangladesh. They get floods, the whole city is flooded. Everything is gone. I've seen pictures that he sent with email, and these people are living, you know, with donkeys and horses and on barefoot walking through the streets and not having food enough to eat. You know, my friend Pastor Dominguez in Mexico has 11 churches. Has 11 churches. Has a car, has a car that's falling apart. Those churches, they have dirt floors and no windows in them. They are just walls. Brick walls, nothing else. A luxury in those churches is if they have enough money to buy a ceiling fan to cool them off in the, in the hot summer times. That's a luxury over there. And you know, and this pastor is working for a little bit of money without a good car, without a good transportation, with 11 churches running around every single day from one member to another, taking care of them, going to the ones who are poor, making sure that they have enough food to eat that day. We should be grateful for what we have. Amen. And I walked into one of those churches, and I told you this before, you know, they have plastic chairs. And, you know, a few weeks before that, when I went over there in this church, we were looking to buy chairs for the gym. You guys reminded me about that. For the gym, and we went online, and we were looking at these chairs, and I found things that I never knew about chairs. I found out that there is a one-hour chair, there is a two-hour chair, there is a four-hour chair. And you can buy a four-hour chair for $120, and you can sit on it for four hours, and supposedly you'll still be comfortable. 
Well, you go to over there to those churches, they have plastic chairs. And they were donated by a beer company. And it says so on them, you know. So that's what they have in churches. And you know what? They sit on those hard plastic chairs all day long. What do we complain about? I mean, look at the wonderful church we got. We got padded pews. When I came to this church 15, 16 years ago, the church decided to pad these pews, you know, and they've been nice and padded ever since. Pretty comfortable. You know, we are rich. We are rich compared to the rest of the world. We are rich. And not only are we rich, we are also enjoying it too much. 1 Timothy 6.17 says, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. And so many people out there are focusing on the enjoyment. Black Friday, everybody wanted to get the 70 or 80 or whatever is the latest, an inch TV, flat screen. You know, and everybody's looking for deals. And everybody wants to enjoy themselves. And we love to have fun in this country, right? And people will do anything to have fun. And they will spend all kinds of money. And they will get up in the morning and they'll go on these trips and have fun, you know, and just do everything. Spend a, a huge amounts of money on enjoyment. Sabbath morning, have the churches late. They can't wake up. Monday morning, running late to work. Can't get up. We can get up to go fishing at 2 o'clock in the morning. You know, we can get up at 2 o'clock in the morning to go skiing. But we can't get up uh, uh, to, get, to get on time to work or to church or to do something for God. Somebody said that I like this quote. We worship our work, work at our play, and play at our worship. Isn't that interesting? But remember this, there will be terrible times in the last days. It's coming. 2 Timothy 3, 4 to 5, people have become lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, have nothing to do with them. God richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment, and I got to tell you, I think sometimes we enjoy it a little bit too much. They are now saying that children nowadays are spending 45 hours a week in front of TV and playing video games. 45 hours a week playing video games and in front of TV. This is a national study done here in the United States. What the heck is going to happen with those kids? They're going to go all get overweight and they're going to have all kinds of problems. And they're going to not develop their social skills. If you're sitting in front of TV and playing video games 45 hours a week, my goodness. You know, the point of, all of this whole thing here it is that it is okay to enjoy life. It's okay to enjoy things. But it's not okay to completely focus all of our life just on more and more pleasure. And on more and more enjoyment. If we do that, if, that, if that's what our focus is, then we lose our relationship with God. Then we forget God. Amen. You know, because we are just seeking for more and more and, and better and better. We have everything that we can ask for and we are enjoying it too much. People in this country and in most of the Western countries, they are playing too much, they are eating too much, and they have too much pleasure. And then we complain too much. I heard somebody else say buffets. Buffets are not where we just eat. This is where we gorge ourselves. <laughs> One time, uh, I don't know how many of you remember the Kanda. He was a member here years ago, came from Africa. And one time, you know, we decided to go to a restaurant. And we went on Colfax. There was a Chinese restaurant over there. Buffet, all you can eat for five, six bucks back then, you know. And we started talking, and we started eating, and we started eating some more, and we started eating some more, and about an hour and a half into this, I mean, we, we were just gorgeous, you know. At one point, he looked at me, and he just couldn't eat anymore. I mean, he was just, we already both had our belts undone, you know. And he says, 
Pastor Gordon, I think we are past the point when we sinned. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but isn't that the truth? We always want more. We want more. We want more food. We, food. we want more pleasure. Where does it stop? 1 Timothy 6 10 says, For the love of money, and pleasure could be included in this, is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people are too eager for money. Some have wandered away from faith because of their seeking money and pleasures of this world. When we lust for more and more and more of the things of this world, God goes out of the window. It's okay to enjoy things of this world and the things that we work for hard, but it's not, not okay for that to become the focus of our life. And then, you know, what, the last point that I want to make today is the fact that we express our gratefulness and our thankfulness to God very little and not often enough. Amen. We just don't do it enough. We, we don't go to God on a regular basis and say, Lord, thank you for the things that you gave me today. We complain about life not being fair. We complain about not having more. We complain about not having better. But we don't express our gratefulness. I have a cousin back in the old country. I think at this point, he has built his 11th or 12th house. Nobody lives in them. He doesn't want to rent them out because he doesn't want the renters to mess them up. And these are all three stories, beautiful mansions by the ocean. And he just keeps building, you know. Why? Because he wants more. More and more and more. And when I talk to him about God, he says, oh, don't talk to me about God. I don't believe in that. When he has to pay the people who work for him properly, he doesn't want to do that. He haggles with them. How do you express your thankfulness to God? Which is what we should do. I heard a story that in Los Angeles one time, the traffic police received a letter, and in it was a ticket and the fine in cash. And the note says, I found this ticket on the sidewalk. And I decided I wanted to pay this fine for this person. Because I don't think that they ever seen the ticket on their car. And, this, and the note says, I want to pay it for him on account of all of the times that I, that I parked for too long. For more than I should have. So he decided to pay for somebody else, a person that he didn't even know. Because we all park our cars and sometimes we come back half an hour later, and you know what? We didn't get a ticket. How often do you express your gratefulness and your thankfulness? Not just to God, but also to other people. How many of us could make it without other people? I couldn't be, be a pastor without you. If I didn't have people coming to church, I wouldn't be a pastor. I am not a pastor unless you are here. You are not the church without each other. We are not the church family without each other. Who amongst us here in this room has accomplished everything in their life on their own? I have my mother and father to be grateful to for, all, for where I am today. Along the way, there were so many people, high school teachers and counselors and people who gave me jobs along the way. At that time, I thought maybe those, that those jobs stunk. But they gave me jobs. They trusted me. They paid me. They helped me become who I am today. They gave me the experience. I had a teacher in college, Hebrew, Dr. Schwartz, in Chicago, public college. You know, he was one of the nicest guys that you could ever meet. 
And I didn't want to study Hebrew, I tell you, because it's a difficult language to study, but I had to take two semesters of it for my requirements because I was at Andrews, you know. So this guy, I tell you, he made the study of Hebrew an enjoyable experience. He's somebody I should be thankful for, for helping me be here today. And how many are out there that I have forgotten? Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I heard the story that a man started a company and he listed God as the chairman of the board. Amen. Shouldn't God be the chairman of our life? Shouldn't God be the chairman of everything that we do? Amen. There was another story that I heard of a woman who was living on a farm and one time she brought $10 to the preacher and she said this was back in the days when $10 was a lot of money and she said the storm came through and all of my, the other farms in, the, in my, in my uh, neighborhood were ruined and mine was not and she said I wanted to give a special thank offering to church because God protected me how often do you express your gratefulness and your thankfulness for what God has done for you? How many things has God saved you from in this world? How many of us remember when we get a raise at work to bring a little more to church, to God? Just to say thank you. How many times did we have a situation where we just missed being in a car accident? Be okay to bring God extra 50 bucks and say, Lord, thank you for saving me thousands of dollars just a few moments ago. This is not just about money. I'm not trying to raise funds here for the church. But I'm saying, how do you express your gratefulness for the things that God has done for you? What are you thankful for today? I'm thankful for, another preacher has put this together, not me. I'm thankful for the taxes I pay because it means that I am employed. Amen. I'm thankful for the clothes that fit a little too snug because it means I have enough to eat. I'm thankful for my shadow who watches me work because it means I'm out in the sunshine. I'm thankful for the lawn that needs mowing, windows that need cleaning, and gutters that need fixing because it means I have a home. Sometimes we complain about all of those things. I'm thankful for the spot I find at the far end of the parking lot because it means I'm capable of walking. I'm thankful for my huge heating bill because it means I'm warm. I'm thankful about all the complaining I hear about our government because it means we have freedom of speech. I'm thankful for the lady behind me in the church who sings off key because it means I, that I can hear. I'm thankful about the piles of laundry and ironing because it means my loved ones stop by. I'm thankful for the... Yeah, no, you're not thankful about it, Anna? <laughs> they come and they just never don't want to leave and they leave everything dirty. Yeah, I hear both sides of the story there. <laughs> thankful about the alarm that goes off in the early morning hours because it means that I'm alive. I'm thankful for the weariness and aching muscles at the end of the day because it means I have been productive. Well, in everything that happens to us, there is something to be thankful for. Yeah. I read a story about the young man who became a CPA, certified public accountant, and his dad owned uh, a little business. So when this young guy, he graduated, he came back to his father's business, you know, and now he was smart and he had a diploma and he looked at his dad and he says, Dad, you just don't know what you're doing. I mean, look at this. Your papers are, your bills are over here and your cash is over here and your accounts receivables are over here and you don't even know how much profit you're making here at this business. You know, his father, he looked at him and he says, you know, when I came to this country, I came, him, I came here only with a pair of pants. Now, 
<coughs> your brother is a doctor, your sister is a teacher, you're a CPA, me and, my, me and your mom, we own a, our own house, we have a car that's paid off, and we have this little business. So add all of that up, subtract the pair of pants, and there's the profit. <laughs> Smart, isn't it? Well, let me tell you something. Add it all up. Add all of the blessings up that are in your life. If you start adding them up, you are going to realize how much God has blessed you. I saw a story about this kid that was born without arms and legs. Somebody had to take care of him the rest of his life. The rest of his life. And when they asked him what he wished for the most, he said that one day he'd be able to touch his mother's face with his hand. And, and look at us. Look at us. We got everything. I made a mistake and stepped on a scale the other day. And sure, I realized we were in the holiday season. We have too much of everything, guys. Add it all up. See how much God has blessed you. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I want you to see this little clip that we have prepared for you before you leave here today. I finished my college here. I was working for Taj Gurkha from his family. I saw a very old man. He was heating his own human waste for hunger. I thought, what is the purpose of my life? What am I going to do? In a star hotel, I feed all my guests. But where in my hometown, there are people who are living even without food. And I quit my job and I started feeding all these people from 2002. Father God, thank you for reminding us how much we have. Thank you for 
allowing us to live in this blessed country where we have more than we really need. Lord, I ask today that you would help us add it all up and that you would give us your Holy Spirit, that we would see this life and this world through the eyes of Jesus, that we would understand what it is that you want us to do, that you would give us, Lord, the ability to say thank you properly, that we would be able to express our gratefulness to you in a practical way, that maybe we too will feed somebody or maybe just hug somebody or maybe just tell somebody that we love them and that you also love them. Father, I know that in this congregation, there are so many people out there that we know who could use a friend, who could use a little bit of help. I ask, Lord, that you lead each one of us in this next week to somebody who could uh, use a little bit of encouragement, whether it be through material help or whether it be through just a, a human touch, a human contact. Father, maybe even in our own families, there are people who haven't heard from us in a long time. Maybe there are people who feel that we have forgotten them. Forgive us if that is the case, Lord, and help us to be reminded of all of the wonderful, great things that you have given to us so that we would also pass those on to somebody else. Father, we thank you once again, and we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, and we'll see you next week.